Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be taking a trip back to 2018, where I first attempted to repair this iPod Touch 4th generation. The first part of this video is unreleased footage, which was originally meant to be a screen replacement to the device, but I got a little bit more than I bargained for when I attempted the repair. The iPod Touch is known to be one of Apple's hardest to repair devices, so in this video I'm going to be showing the difficulty I faced when trying to repair the device and what actually makes it so difficult. A screen replacement is one of the most common repairs done on devices. Usually it's a manageable task taking about 20 minutes, but on the iPod Touch the display is glued down into place like an iPad. Most view this as the hardest step on devices like an iPad, however on the iPod Touch it's only just the beginning. Once the display has been separated, the LCD cable will most likely have already come unplugged. But the problem lies with the touchscreen cable. This is poorly located on the underneath side of the logic board. While a huge bummer, it's not the main problem I have with the repairability of the device. Both the battery, power button and volume button cables are soldered on, meaning they cannot easily be unplugged. As a result, accessing that touchscreen cable proves even more difficult than first thought. But nevertheless, that didn't stop me from attempting this screen replacement. I went ahead and swapped across the home button, as well as this little metal bracket up top, which I think helps align the front facing camera. I could transfer these two components onto my new screen, and then have the very difficult process of trying to connect up the display. I managed to get the cable underneath the logic board, but getting it connected correctly was very difficult, and every time I went to press down the display, it would come unplugged. About 20 minutes later or so, I managed to get it connected and everything appeared to be working at first. Unfortunately, after the screen replacement, the power button magically stopped working. Now I obviously thought I might have damaged the cable, so I put the device away and kind of forgot about it. It's now 2020 and it's time that I teared this back apart and tried to fix what I broke back in 2018. I did reassemble the device after I broke the power button, this way I knew where all the screws would go the next time I tried to repair it. So I cracked back into the device and I'm now going to attempt to replace the power button. I'll need to remove the logic board for this and to be honest I wish I had to remove the logic board when I did the screen replacement. Not only would it have been much more easy to connect up the digitizer cable, but also I might have had less chance of breaking that power button. As mentioned earlier, the battery is soldered onto the board, so I can't just simply disconnect it and remove the logic board. Instead, I have to pry up the battery before I can take out the logic board completely. And just like the new iPhones, the battery is glued into place really securely, so it's hard to remove. But once they're free from the housing, I can disconnect the display and finally get access to the power and volume button cable. At a first glance, I can't see any damage or any reason that the cable wouldn't be functioning. Anyway, I'm going to remove it and replace it with a new one. The cable itself is quite glued down into place and the volume buttons were actually kind of difficult to remove as they were adhered quite well to the frame. I ended up using a jimmy tool to be able to get underneath them and remove them from the frame. Coming back to the logic board, you can see the connection where it is soldered into place. There seems to be some kind of gunk on top, so I'll need to remove that before I can attempt to disconnect this connection. Now the soldering iron I'm using in this is actually part of my rework station. Unfortunately, it is pretty garbage and doesn't work very well, so later on I actually used my more powerful, normal sized soldering iron. I did tin the new flex cable in the hopes that it would create a better connection to the solder pads on the logic board. I then attempted to line it up correctly and solder it back into place. Once I felt that everything was good to go, I connected up the display and plugged in the charger. Because it was flat, I was able to test the power button to see if it would line up with the battery flat symbol. However, it didn't, so I'm going to need to reseat the connection and make sure I had all of the solder pads lined up. But unfortunately, it still wasn't working. So I thought that I may have damaged the cable or the one I'd received was faulty. So I purchased two more of AliExpress. One of them rocked up damaged, but the other one appears to not be damaged in any way. These ones are clearly used and have been pulled off iPod touches. So hopefully I can get something out of these ones. I soldered one into place and gave the connection a clean with some alcohol, connected up a display, and sure enough, the power button is now functioning. 
All that's left to do is reassemble the iPod and we should be good to go. I'll also need to attach this little bracket which goes on the power button and that is just its retaining bracket so it can screw into the housing. Before I put the logic board back in, I'll remove the Wi-Fi antenna and attach it to the logic board itself. This will just make it much more easier to put the logic board back into place. I can finally align the new power button and volume button assembly into place and screw in all the necessary screws to hold it together. This actually took quite a bit of time because some of these brackets are actually hard to keep in place while you screw them in. I'll also apply some fresh adhesive to keep this power button cable in place, making sure to route the cable in its correct position to prevent it from being damaged when I screw everything back together. Finally, I can seat everything back in, plug in the display and test yet again that the power button is still working. As you can see, the board is now in the housing, the screen is attached and the power button is working. All that's left to do is install the final screws and the metal bracket that secure everything in place. There's also a lot of other little components like the speaker and the headphone jack which will need to be pushed into position. I can finally screw in the remaining screws to hold on this metal bracket. I specifically made sure not to over tighten these screws as I didn't want to damage anything inside the device. I could finally give it a wipe down and get ready to install some new adhesive. Previously I never got this far with the repair as the power button stopped working. Now I didn't have the correct adhesive that would have shipped with the device from the factory so I'm using some of this stuff which I've cut myself. This stuff is like super strength so there would be no chance of that display ever coming off. Finally all that was left to do was to connect up the LCD connection and test out the device before I sealed it down. Pressing the home button you can see the device lights up and appears to be working. I can slide to unlock and everything looks good as new. There's one issue though. You guessed it, the power button doesn't work. How? I have no idea. Before the screws were installed everything was working, but the power button stops working when the logic board was screwed down. That's now the second time this has happened. Could something be pinching on the cable, damaging it? Or is there a screw causing damage? I don't know. But for now, this iPod is as broken as it was in 2018. In closing, the iPod Touch is hands down the most complicated device I've ever tried to repair. I've been successful in repairing bent, smashed and even completely destroyed phones and devices, but this little iPod has proved the biggest challenge of all. I won't be giving up, but for now it's back to the repair pile for this iPod. I couldn't recommend anyone attempt a repair on this device if they are wanting a functional iPod at the end. If you're wanting a music player, buy an iPod, not an iPod Touch. The iPod is easy to repair, customizable, and even upgradable. Sure, it's a little bit thicker, but honestly, I'd rather a thicker device that I can keep around and keep functioning rather than a thin device that's extremely complicated to repair and people are just more likely to throw away. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the electronics repair playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.